These are seven coffee hand grinders and in this video I'm going to compare them to determine which of these grinders is the best choice for you. I've selected these seven grinders based on the current popularity in the market, polls posted on my social media, and votes from my Patreon supporters. Some of these I purchased for the purpose of this video, some were purchased through Patreon support which allows me a budget to create videos like these and in exchange I gift the products back to Patrons after creating videos but more on this later and one of these was gifted to me from a local retailer. So today, we're going to compare and take a deep look at the build quality of each of these devices, the design, unique features, grinding workflow, grind speed, grinds distribution, and overall taste results. And at the end of this video, I'm going to share the grinder I think is the best option for most people and the one that will become my daily driver, as well as a few runner-ups depending on a few situations. But first, hey. My name is Kyle and welcome back to the channel. This channel is all about helping you in your coffee journey and helping specialty coffee to be a little bit more approachable and accessible. I'd really appreciate if you consider tamping that like button down below and maybe visit that subscribe button down there while you're at it. So the first grinder that we're going to compare today is the Comandante C40. This is a premium well-built German made grinder that comes in around 275 to 325 depending on the model, the finish and where you're buying it from. That is US. The second grinder we're going to compare today is the Time More Chestnut X and this is Time More's flagship grinder coming in at around $315 US. The next grinder we're going to compare is the Easy Press OK Plus. Like the Time More, it's also the flagship to its lineup in Easy Presso's grinders. The next grinder we're going to compare is the Kinu M47 and this is their simplicity model. Now Kinu has three models in the M47 seven the simplicity which is the middle child the classic which is their flagship and then also the phoenix which is their entry level to the m47 all of them have the same burr set and the reason i chose the simplicity was because it was the same price range as these other grinders at least in canada the simplicity comes in around 275 dollars and the next grinder we're going to compare is the easy presso jx and the easy presso jx was the winner to my budget friendly comparison video if you haven't watched that yet i will link that down in the description below so you can watch that after you finish watching this video but this comes in at $140 US so I want to know at $140 how does this grinder compare to some other grinders that are double in its price range can it hold its own weight we're gonna find out and then the next grinder is the easy presso J max yes a third easy presso grinder these were the ones that were the most requested coming in at 199 it seems like a good value can it hold its own we're gonna find out. And then last but not least, my curiosity is spiked with this one and this is the Normcore version two. And at $90, I wanna see, can you save your money? Can you go with a grinder like the Normcore or are these grinders that are so much more expensive really worth that upgrade? I'm gonna link any of these down in the description below, by the way, if you wanna check them out. They're also affiliate links, so they also support this channel at no extra cost to you. But I think it's time to get into this. Hey man, I'm, I'm filming a video here. Dearest, don't forget to tell them about you know. No, no I don't. Oh, I think you know. Nope, still nothing. <sighs> yep, now you're just creeping me out. Oh, yes, yes, thank you. This video is sponsored by Third Wave Water. Now guys, I'm really excited about this sponsorship and Third Wave Water is a product I've been using literally for years and I truly believe in it. Now here's the deal, 98% of coffee is made of water. So water is the second most crucial ingredient to your beverage than the coffee itself. But water is such an inconsistent variable with different minerals and dissolved solids, not only from country to country, but city to city. And that's where third wave water comes in. Third wave water is a mineral supplement, which when added to demineralized water, creates the optimal mixture to creating the perfect cup of coffee. Now they have three different profiles in the classic for your everyday filter coffee, the dark roast profile for the person who doesn't love acidic coffees and likes darker roasted coffee. And then the espresso profile, which I love because not only does it create sweet, wonderful espresso, but it also helps protect against lime scale and corrosion in your boilers because they use different supplements than sodium and some other stuff that you would find in your everyday filtered or tap water. If you want to learn more about third wave water, use the link in the top of the description or head to thirdwavewater.com and be sure to use the code Kyle15 at checkout for a discount off your first order. Thank you third wave water for sponsoring this video. 
So let's start with one of the most popular hand grinders to date, the Comandante C40. I believe a great place to start since the C40 is commonly classified as the gold standard for coffee hand grinders. While aesthetics will be a subjective subject, I do believe the aesthetics of the Comandante C40 are classy and classic. It is the shortest, but is also the girthiest of all the grinders and uses a high grade wood veneer as the outer shell to give it a warm and classy feel. Commandante is often releasing new colors and finishes of wood and the ability to choose the wood on your grinder or the color of the finish is something I think I've personally taken for granted in other products and I'll give Commandante some extra points for the color options. Now European Coffee Trip, an amazing YouTube channel, created an extensive video covering the process of creating the Commandante grinder from their factory. If you haven't yet given this a watch and are interested, I'll leave a link to that video down in the description. Be sure to go give that watch after the video since it gives a great view of the care put into each unit. They're building the C40 with extensive detail and craftsmanship. Each grinder is built in Germany by hand by extensive detail. From sanding and waxing the wood veneer by hand to hand pressing their logo with a wood burner in each body. For me, it shows their care for the small details and it translates to its build quality. The Comandante also does use a glass jar for its ground catcher. And while this had me scared when I first received it, I can attest that this is pretty durable because my three-year-old has stolen my C40 a few times with no damage to the glass or shell of the C40. Scary moments nonetheless, but it survived. To be noted, the Mark IV has upgraded the jar to be even more durable, that's their claim. And in the case of your three-year-old does decide to throw it, that's a good idea. On the flip side, I don't love the plastics used on the handle and the lid and find the internal pieces missing some of the metal components found on some of these other grinders. The Mark IV has also updated the internal feeding chamber to avoid beans getting stuck inside the handle hole. And lastly, when it comes to design, we need to talk about the workflow in the C40. This is where I believe that Commandante has paved the road for so many other manufacturers, yet it falls short in some spots. While the C40 is over-engineered in many of its attributes, when it comes to its grind adjustments, it uses large clicks to measure its grind setting and range without the ability to recognize which click number you're on without either writing it down or resetting to zero. And this, this can be frustrating if multiple people are using the grinder or if used in a cafe setting. That being said, the click adjustments on the C40 are absolutely wonderful for filter coffee and have become the gold standard to communicate recipes around the world when describing filter coffee brews. When it comes to espresso on the C40, it's a wonderful grinder in the grinds that it produces. And more on that shortly but its larger clicks are less than ideal for espresso. At 30 microns per click, the C40 often overshoots what adjustment is needed. There is a mod called the Red Clicks that gives double the amount of adjustments per click. I do have one on the way and I'm excited to explore that. So the C40 makes repeating recipes or understanding what adjustments are needed when dialing a bruise and connecting with your coffee an absolute joy. It truly has changed brewing filter coffee for me. In many ways, this can be comparable to the EK43 of hand grinders in terms of its universally shared language and community. And as one heck of a community. Regardless of if this is the best overall grinder in this group, a grinder with a community like the C40s is one worth mentioning and for many, worth the investment. We started this off strong, but let's see how the others fare. Next, let's talk about the Chestnut X from Time War. And let's get right to it. This hand grinder's design is stunning and sleek. I remember being surprised on how solid and well-designed this grinder was the first time using it. So let's talk about it. The Time War Chestnut X has a CNC cut aluminum unibody, which is squared off on the outside, giving it a beautiful look and functional grip. Speaking of grip, this does have a leather wrap option. Unfortunately, I don't have it for this video, but it does help with the grip because otherwise it is a little slippery at times and the leather adds just a little bit of class, but for $65 Canadian, I couldn't justify it. Now, even the ground's been a CNC cut aluminum, preventing any breakage issues that could occur with glass or longevity issues with plastic. And on the subject of grounds bins, it may seem like something small, but it only takes half a turn to take it on and off, and it locks in place with an incredibly satisfying click. The grind shaft is kept in place by two good quality bearings, and the quality makes sure the grinding is as smooth and consistent as possible. This paired with the hefty aluminum handle gives a premium feeling grinder experience to match its premium premium price tag. Speaking of the handle, it needs to be worth mentioning because it truly, it's truly unique unlike anything else appearing on this table. 
This feature first appeared on Time Wars Nano and it's the ability to fold down the handle and tuck it away when not in use, which is a real nice for putting it in places. The back of the knob also has a rubber damper for both preventing the body from harm from the metal, but also being a grounds knocker after grinding your coffee. Now, unlike the C40, you don't have to endure the prescribed numbers of clicks from zero method as the Chestnut X comes with an absolute grind adjustment. Running from one to 24, you can set and communicate grind size without having to guess whether you're at the perfect level of grind to get the best out of your coffee. But it doesn't stop there with the Chestnut X as it also comes with a micro adjustment dial that allows you to adjust each of the 24 steps to a further Further five individually. So in total, you have access to 120 grind accuracy settings, and this makes the Chestnut X perfect for espresso as the micro adjustments allow for precise control while dialing in your shot. So what about filter coffee? Well, the Chestnut X is very capable of grinding all filter coffee ranges from fine to coarse, but we will talk about the grind quality and taste results later in this video. Next up is the K Plus from Easy Presso. Now, if you've been following along this channel for any period of time, you know that I'm a big fan of the products from Easy Presso lately, and the K Plus is their flagship grinder, so I'm very excited to review this one. The first thing we have to look at is its design. It's a very well made grinder, and similar to the Chestnut, when you have it in hand, it feels extremely premium. It does have a unique design characteristic that are very similar to the other grinders from Easy Presso, like their website branding right on the grinder. But if you can look past this little quirk, I think this is a fantastic grinder here that we need to talk about. The most notable aspect is this prominent ring with numbers where you can adjust the grinds without having to remove the grinds bin. It's a genius way to know what grind you're at quickly and easily while having a satisfying way to adjust your coffee. You have a total of 90 clicks in one full turn with 22 microns per click. The grinder is precise and fast to adjust without having to count clicks, and it truly is a joy to dial in coffee. The grinder is made of brushed aluminum that feels durable, heavy, and high quality. It's wrapped in the center with this unique rubber-like material that I find convenient when grinding since it helps with slippage and just better grip. It also has a thoughtful narrow center for an easier grip for those with smaller hands. The dose cup on the K Plus is also aluminum but uses a satisfying magnet system to keep it in place. Now at first I was a little nervous on how this could play out because if the grounds catcher got bumped while grinding, well, you know what would happen. But Easy Presso thought of this and the magnets, while not perfect, are pretty strong. Now speaking of the dose cup, a unique feature that had me smiling was Easy Presso's second dose cup. Now, similar to some Weber workshop grinders, the K Plus has an option to use a dose bin that's floor can be pulled out once placed on a portafilter or a brewer, allowing the grinds to fall through into the portafilter without mess, while also assisting in distribution. A genius innovation for espresso lovers. Honestly, game changing. And speaking of the espresso, the K Plus is capable for espresso. Now, while there are other grinders in this lineup that excel at espresso more than the K Plus with finer adjustments, because this is 22 microns, I think this is a great high hybrid for those who want great filter coffee and espresso. But again, we'll talk more about that shortly. Next up is the Kinu M47 Simplicity. Now the Simplicity is identical in its core features to the M47 while offering a more affordable option by sacrificing few details. But let's start with the good. Now the Simplicity uses a fully brushed stainless steel body and it's hefty. The simplicity feels extremely well thought out and over engineered while using it. Everything from the stainless steel grinder handle that locks in place with the pin from the adjustment system to the open top to feed beans without having to remove a cap each time you want to grind. This grinder is one that is well designed and simple. It truly is a unique feature to completely remove the grinder lid and I quickly grew fond of this workflow. Every morning I could adjust my grind setting and add coffee without removing any part of the grinder. It's pretty nice. Now this adjustment knob is also the only grinder of the bunch that is a true stepless system. By loosening its pin and turning the dial, you can adjust the grinder to your desired grind setting. It's a premium experience and easy to understand once you get the hang of it, how it works. While not as convenient and as quick to communicate recipes to others since you have to include both full rotation numbers and the dial numbers, it is possible and it makes dialing in espresso a breeze as small adjustments can be made without overshooting. 
Now the Simplicity uses a plastic catch bin to save the buyer some money versus the classic's magnetic full metal bin. And the handle also uses a high grade plastic over a metal handle. But overall I find no issues with the build quality of the M47 Simplicity, understanding that it uses plastic to save money over the more premium classic. For those wanting a premium grinder that can grind espresso to filter, the M47 is a great option. Now the M47 is also a fast grinder, but we'll talk about the grind quality and speed very shortly. Next up is the Easy Presto JX. Now I won't spend too much time on this one because it was the winner of my budget friendly grinder as I mentioned earlier. Now if you haven't yet watched that again, I will link that down in the description below. But in this video, I claim the JX to be one of the best built quality grinders in this price range I've ever experienced. Like I said with the K Plus, Easy Presto is doing a great job with hand grinders right now and the JX is a perfect example of this. Not only is this grinder placed around $150 US, it has a build quality that feels more like grinders twice as price range. So what's the catch, Kyle? Well, this grinder doesn't have all the bells and whistles of the K Plus, like its outer adjustment ring and drop through grinds catcher. It also uses a very different burr design than the more expensive K Plus, but we're gonna compare the taste later in this video and grind consistency to see if that's a big issue comparing these two. With its full aluminum body with no plastics other than the grind lids, it's really impressive what Easy Press has been able to do with the JX. I don't love the rubber on the outside of the JX and their, again, website branding, but I think if you can get past those things, you have an excellent grinder here. And then there's the J-Max, and this is the newest grinder on this table, and it's in the same family as the JX. Now the J-Max, unlike its brother, the JX, is focused on being a grinder that excels at espresso. And that's because the J-Max has an adjustment system of 90 clicks per rotation with each click being an adjustment of 8.8 .8 microns. This is fantastic for espresso lovers looking for the best shot of espresso possible from a hand grinder, especially at a lower price range. Now I've covered the J-Max exclusively in a video that I'll link right above right here, but I wanted to clarify and correct a statement I made in the previous video. I said the J-Max doesn't have a way to measure which rotation you're on, which I found to be frustrating while using it since it can take multiple rotations to simply get in the range for espresso. Many, many were quick to comment that the Easy Presso has a pyramid of dots to outline which rotation you're on. Well, at the time I knew this, I didn't feel this was a convenient way to measure the rotations and I left it out of the video. But today I wanna give some credit to Easy Presso because this is a thoughtful design and because I didn't find it convenient doesn't mean I should completely get rid of it in the video. And so I also want to apologize to Easy Presso, but I want to explain how this works. You see, each row is outlined by dots that also allows you to count which rotation you're on. As you extend the grinder, there'll be more dots to be able to measure which rotation you're on. It's thoughtful, it's unique, and with some use, I've actually grown fond to it. So overall, the J-Max feels great and it has another premium feel. Full thoughts on the design can be found in that video link down in the description, but this is a grinder worth considering if you're interested in grinding for espresso while making the occasional filter coffee. And last but certainly not least is the Normcore version 2. Another grinder from my budget grinder comparison, the Normcore is a grinder worth considering regardless of your budget. And here's why. They've recently released the version 2 and addressed a lot of the issues and the build quality that I brought up in that original video. So let's talk about it. Now the Normcore is a fully aluminum body hand grinder with a smaller capacity of around 20 to 25 grams of coffee and grinds exceptionally fast. Results on that shortly, but the V2 removed the fragile plastic lid and replaced it with a unibody handle and lid combination. The version 2 has also doubled the amount of clicks per rotation with 24 clicks per rotation. Now this is great for those wanting precisely dial in their coffees. Now the version 2 also added a rubber grip that also doubles as a handle holder. And honestly, I love this. Overall, the Normcore version 2 is an excellent grinder and at one third the price of some of these grinders. But when it comes to grind quality, the things that really matter, how does it stack up to grinders three times its price. Well, let's talk about grind quality. So for this, we're gonna share the speed of each grinder grinding 20 grams of coffee at 800 microns, a fairly fine filter coffee size, and a great middle ground between espresso and coarser filter coffee. We will also take a look at the burst set of each grinder. 
We will also talk about the grinds distribution by means of a sift test by the cream sifter. This will measure roughly how consistent these grinders are and these results will be linked in the comments down below. But it's important to realize distribution isn't the end all be all factor of grinders, but it's a good way to measure the quality of their grounds. And lastly, we'll talk about the taste, keeping in mind that taste is a subjective measurement. I'll share with you my thoughts on each of these grinders after using them all for three months. Hey guys, Editor Kyle here, and I'm editing a video right now, and I forgot to mention one other thing that I'm working on, and that is a calculator to be able to translate the grind size that we communicate between these grinders. We all know that the C40 is a very popular grinder to communicate recipe sizes and click adjustments. But that doesn't always translate to the other grinders, and so I wanted to make a calculator to say 22 clicks on the C40 would also equal so many adjustments on the Kinu, for example. I haven't been able to get that done for this video. It's been a lot more work than I thought it would be. If I'm able to get it done, it will be linked in this video at some point in time, but I thought I'd let you know because I forgot to add that in the video. All right. Let's start with the C40. The Comandante uses a 39 millimeter conical burr and Comandante claims their selection of the burr material is the proud result of dedicated research and development. They decided to choose a high alloy, high nitrogen stainless steel as their burr material and they call it their nitro blade. Let's start with what I don't love and then more to what I do because there's a lot to talk about here. So the C40 uses one of the smallest burr sets on this table and at 39 millimeter it's 20% smaller than many of the other burr sets here. But size doesn't always matter, right? Right? The 39 millimeter is not an issue when it comes to quality, but it is when it comes to speed. Grinding 20 grams of coffee around 20 clicks in one minute and 15 seconds, it's definitely not gonna win any races. It's not so like some of the older ceramic burr hand grinders that take closer to two minutes to grind, but it's also long enough to notice how slow it can be, especially when in a rush. When it comes to espresso, it's simply not an incredible experience. It's very possible, but grinding for espresso daily on the C40 would get old on, for me at least, fairly quick. But that's where the bad ends for me because the C40 delivers fantastic grinds and distribution. As I mentioned, the sift test isn't the most important tool in this test, but the C40 had 85.5% of its 20 grams in the sweet zone between 400 and 1100 microns. And this next part, while not being a scientific measurement, even looking at the C40 grounds with the naked eye, there seems to be a distinct difference in their grind uniformity. Honestly, now it's hard to explain without actually seeing the grounds, but this is why I claim the sift test isn't always the best way to measure grind quality as the grinder can cut the grinds not only in different sizes, but different microscopic shapes. This wouldn't be as measurable on a sift test, but would be very recognizable when tasting coffee since water would break down the components of the grounds at different rates depending on their initial surface area exposed. Now, I don't wanna to get too much into this in this video and that might seem confusing, so maybe I'll do another video on that another time, but the C40 has incredible uniform grinds. Now, speaking of taste, the C40 is wonderful. And in fact, probably in understatement. It, it should be said that this, this price point, all of these hand grinders will outperform most hand electric grinders in their price range. And in my opinion, being able to save on electric components and other parts, they can focus on their burr set and grind quality. But the C40 stands out clearly as one of the most balanced cup of coffees on this table. It has nice sweetness and attached acidity that is hard to get wrong. Many have described it to be a magnifying glass to the flavors in your coffee. And I believe this is a great analogy. It makes tasting coffee enjoyable and transparent and makes brewing delicious coffee, honestly, a lot easier. I can't emphasize enough that the coffee from the C40 is fantastic. Is it my favorite? Well, Let's talk about the others first to see. Hey friends, if you made it this far in the video, well, first of all, give yourself a pat on the back, but also hit that like button down below. It really helps out this channel. It sends the algorithm signals to send this video to other people so they can learn more about specialty coffee. All right, thanks. Let's get back to the video. The Easy Press OK Plus uses a 48 millimeter conical burst set that applies a lot of lessons learned from other manufacturers like Commandante and Kinu before them. One of those being faster grinding experiences. The K Plus was the fastest grinder in the bunch coming in at 37 seconds to grind 20 grams of coffee at 800 microns. This is exceptionally fast and makes grinding by hand a lot easier and more enjoyable as a daily task when brewing coffee. Now this might not sound like a lot of time, 30 seconds between the two, but when you're doing this much labor every single day, or if you're in a rush, 30 seconds is actually 
a big deal. Now the burr set from the K Plus is well designed and seems to use a lot of the same geometry from other grinders similar to the C40. The SIF test revealed that the K Plus has 88% of the grinds in the Swede zone, a few percent higher than the C40. A fantastic feat for Easy Press, so, and one I was impressed with. And again, the grounds look incredibly uniform. Now maybe not as much as the C40 by the naked eye, but they're definitely fluffy, uniform, and they, they, they look delicious. It's faster and more uniform, but what about taste? Well, the Easy Presso creates a wonderfully delicious cup of coffee. It has sparkling acidity with good sweetness and great mouthfeel. The coffee will not disappoint and has a lot of those magnifying glass characteristics the C40 has. I do find the sweetness is a little less present on the K plus and the acidity doesn't quite feel as attached as the C40s. Now this is completely nitpicking, but that's why I do these videos. Now I wouldn't say that the flavors in the cup are better than the C40, but I would say they're pretty close. To most people, you may not notice the difference and that's a pretty big deal. Overall, I think the K plus is an amazing grinder and the fact that it's so close to the Commandante C40, a gold staple in this industry with faster grind speeds and some other amazing features, it's a great grinder. Next up is the Chestnut X, and the X has a lot to talk about when it comes to its burr set. It uses a 42 millimeter conical burr set with a unique patented technology called Spike to Cut, or S2C. So Tatmor knew that there were already so many great grinders on the market, so they wanted to take another look at the wheel to see if any revisions could be made worth reinventing. And their result is a burr set that it squeezes and crushes the bean before cutting it. Now they claim it produces a more uniform grind and testing it seems to actually be true with 88.5% of the sift test being in the sweet zone. The Time War Chestnut X is even more uniform than the previous two grinders. The Chestnut X does claim to be a grinder focused on filter and espresso, but in my experience, it seems to be a grinder that excels at espresso more than it does filter coffee. And with premium features like its heavy handle, it does make grinding espresso a little bit easier. But that being said, it's not a fast grinder by any means. Grinding at 115 for 20 grams of coffee ground at 800 microns, it's exactly the same speed as the Commandante C40, which I said was slow. So I guess it's slow. So how does it taste? Well, if I'm honest, it wouldn't be my first pick for filter coffee. It does produce a fantastic cup and one that would leave many extremely satisfied, but I didn't truly enjoy the profiles the Burke created compared to the other grinders in this test. The coffee was often lacking acidity and transparency and trading this for higher complexity. It seems like this grind distribution is skewed on the finer side, which again, I believe helps excel at producing great espresso. So if I'm honest, I was left wanting more from the results in the cup from the chestnut as it checks all the boxes for me. Otherwise, it has the best build quality out of the bunch with a beautiful design. And to repeat, it is still a great cup of coffee. It's amazing, but would I buy it? Well, yeah, but I'll talk about why at the end of this video. But first, let's talk about the Kinu M47 Simplicity. The Simplicity has the same burr set from their more expensive model, the Classic, which uses their own 47 millimeter conical burr with black fusion treatment, which is a process they use to harden the burr against wear over time. Now, the Kinu also has an option for the brew burr designed for filter coffee. And while I didn't get my hands on one of these for this video, since no modifications were done to any of these grinders out of the box, if you'd like me to review this in a future video, be sure to let me know in the comments and by liking this video. Now the M47 is also a fast grinder, grinding 50 seconds for 20 grams of coffee at 800 microns. Now not quite as fast as the K Plus, but very respectable and honestly, a joy to use daily. Now it doesn't have as much grip on the grinder and so I had to install a rubber band while using it, but it does have this finger grip so you can push up against it, but it's still not great. When it comes to grind consistency, the M47 has a respectable 87% of the coffee in its sweet spot. Now, over the years, I've often heard the M47 to be revised as the perfect espresso hand grinder, and I can see why. Fast grinding, smooth ball bearings, and stepless adjustments, there's no doubt the M47 is a good espresso grinder, but I really enjoyed it for filter coffee as well. The Kino had a very clean cup of coffee. It was very transparent and delicious. It reminded me a lot of some of my favorite flat burr coffee grinders, and I enjoyed most coffees grinded with this grinder. It lacks some of the sweetness the C40 offered and didn't feel as complete of a tasting experience as the C40, but if you enjoy highly transparent and clean cups of coffee, the Kinu will not disappoint. While the lack of lid was a nice workflow, I did notice that the Kinu had some popcorning issues from time to time, or while grinding, 
coffee would pop out of it. Nothing drastic, but it seemed to be exaggerating when using a full dose of coffee in the grinder. Not something to deter me away from buying the Kinu, but definitely thought worth sharing. The EasyPresso JX uses a 48 millimeter burst set that is different from its older brother, the K Plus. And I've already covered this in a video in the description, so I won't spend much time on the JX, but it did grind 20 grams of coffee in a blazing 55 seconds. Just a little slower than the Kinu and a very impressive result for a grinder, especially at this price. Its sift test results showed 84.5 of its grounds in the sweet spot. Now, while lower than the grinders before it, I think it's still impressive. And its flavor profiles are pretty impressive too. Now, the JX produces a very transparent and delicious cup of coffee. I find its flavors to be detached and lacking sweetness that the C40 offers, and sometimes gives me more of a hollow flavor profile to some of the other grinders on this table. Again, we're nitpicking, and for somebody wanting to save some money, I think the JX is fantastic, and I would prefer the JX over the Chestnut for its flavor profile for filter coffee. But definitely not over the C40 or the K-Series, maybe not even the Kino. Those grinders seem to have a well-rounded cup that had a lot of tension to the full drinking experience. So then the question is, how much is that extra attention to detail worth it for you? For some, it may be worth the upgrade, and for others, it may be indistinguishable. So what about the other Easy Presso, the J-Max? Like the JX, the J-Max has a 48 millimeter burst set, but the J-Max uses a redesigned burr that is coated for protection against wear, like the Kinu, and the Max uses a titanium coated burr. Grinding with the Max took about 57 seconds to grind 20 grams, but even at that slightly slower speed, the J-Max just felt good while doing it. The Max gives a good tactile feedback while grinding and it's satisfying, makes you feel like you're, you're you're getting something done. The sift test revealed that the J-Max had the best distribution of all the grinders at 90% in the sweet zone. Now this honestly surprised me, but I was excited to see that Easy Espresso is continually doing good work. So what about taste? Well, the J-Max does have espresso in mind and the espresso it creates is, is, is wonderful. With great mouthfeel and excellent clarity, I find the J-Max can outperform espresso grinders two to three times its price range. An impressive feat for a small hand grinder like this. Now for filter coffee, it can get the job done, but I do prefer its little brother, the JX, for its clarity and transparency in the cups that it produces over the complexity that the J-Max produces. But if you're somebody who wants a hand grinder for espresso, mostly with the occasional pour over, this grinder would be a great option. And last, but definitely not least, is the Norm Court version two. And I know you've been waiting for this one, so have I. This little grinder is one that I'm really excited to test against these mammoth grinders. And I wanna see how a grinder Less than $100 could stand up against grinders two to three times its price range. So let's get into it. The Normcore ground 20 grams of coffee at 800 microns and <laughs> wait for it, 44 seconds. 44 seconds, faster than every other grinder except for the K Plus. I, I couldn't believe it. Its sift test did reveal that 82.5% of its grounds were in the sweet spot, but nothing to bat an eye at. In comparison, the Porlex Mini did 68% of its grounds in the sweet spot. A grinder of the same price as the Norm Core, keep in mind. But how does it taste? Well, after using it for months, there were days I had my wife swap coffees around for me to do a blind taste test, and there were times that I would get the Norm Core mixed up with some other grinders like the JX. The Norm Core holds its own, producing cups that are juicy with great clarity. I found the cups to be very similar to cups I produced in my fellow Ode, a grinder three times its price range. Now, I want to be careful here because I do believe while being cheaper, there are good reasons for it. It's 39 millimeter burr set is mass produced in China with room for small imperfections and the build quality of the unit isn't as good as the others on this table. It also has only a 20 gram capacity in its chamber, but despite all of these things, it's incredible. And the coffee that it creates, it's, it's pretty great too. I may even take the Norm Core over the coffee produced by the J Max and the Chestnut X for filter coffee but maybe I'm blinded by knowing its price. That's completely possible. Regardless, a great option for the person looking to spend the lease with getting great results from their grinder. So which grinder would I recommend as a daily driver for most people? This is tough. I, I wanna break this down in a few categories. I think for the person wanting to save the most money, it, it's gotta be the Normcore version too. If you wanna save money, this grinder is excellent. I mean, it's competing with grinders three times its price. But the Normcore version two is an awesome, awesome option. But if I was gonna choose the grinder for me, I would probably choose either the K Plus or the C40, and I wanna explain why. While I did enjoy grinders like the Kinu M47, I felt like it just lacked character. 
Maybe it's the wood veneers and just the aesthetics of some of these grinders. The Kinu just felt bland. Now it's over engineered and it's very hefty, but I just didn't fall in love with this grinder like I did with some of the others. And maybe that's different for you. Maybe you have a Kinu, maybe you love it. Let me know in the comments down below if you do. But for me, I just didn't have that experience. The Easy Presso JX and J Max are great grinders, but I just felt like when I used these other grinders, they just left a little bit more desired from the cups that they produce. While excellent grinders, especially at their price point, I did feel like the C40 and the K Plus just produced a little bit more. Now, I wouldn't use both of them, so which one would I choose? I think I would have to choose the K Plus as my daily driver, but if I wanted the best cup possible, if I had a special coffee that I only had a limited batch for, I would use the C40 because I truly believe it still produces the best cup available. The coffee it produces is juicy and acidic and sweet and honestly just well, well rounded and delicious. There's a reason why so many baristas and so many professionals use this grinder and it's got that community behind it which is absolutely amazing. But on the flip, because I've used this grinder, it's the better daily experience. Grinding at twice the speed as the C40 with adjustment rings on the outside and extra features, it's just a great grinder to use that's so close to the C40. So the K Plus would be my daily driver, but for those special moments, if I wanted the best cup possible or if I cared about that community behind me, the C40 is still it. Now before you go, I'm gonna be giving these coffee grinders away to you. Well, more specifically, my Patreon supporters. They allowed me to be able to make this video. They, they gave me a budget to be able to buy these grinders and in exchange, I give them back to all of my Patreon supporters. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description if you wanna check that out, learn more about what it is to become a patron to support this channel, also have access to the Discord and be able to enter into contests like these. I'll leave a link down below and you could win some of these hand grinders. And the community's not that big yet, so the chances are still high, just saying. We'll see you guys all in the next video, peace.